In the late 80s and early 90s, few things were more cool looking than the image of a stealth fighter, specifically a Lockheed F-117 Nighthawk attack plane. It was the first operational stealth aircraft and it hit the skies in 1981, 40 years ago. Today's game is Stealth ATF, released in 1989 and a full two years before the aircraft was even popularized by the Gulf War, and in this game, the F-117 is a fighter jet despite being a ground attack aircraft in reality. There's only one person to blame for that blunder, the director of the game, Gary Kitchen. Gary, presumably embarrassed by his gaffe, never put his name on the cover of this one, and I almost didn't catch that he had anything to do with it until almost too late. Two Gary Kitchen games back to back. Total coincidence. Let's see what's up with Stealth ATF for the NES. According to the manual, the Stealth Advanced Tactical Fighter is said to be America's most closely guarded military secret and it's in your hands. You have to fly a series of combat missions against unnamed enemy forces around the world. Your ATF is fast, deceptive, agile, and capable of disappearing from an enemy's radar. This one is divided into missions and each mission is divided into three sections, takeoff, flying, and landing. Takeoff is easy. You hold in A and press down on the D-pad, which the manual says is equivalent to pulling back on a joystick to lift the plane's nose off the ground. Sure. And after you fly, there's a landing sequence, and it's much more fickle. Here you have to lower the plane by decreasing its speed, but the risk of failure during landing is quite high, which seems to be a common trend in flying games on the NES. Everybody please wave at Top Gun in the back. But the trick I found here was just to ensure the plane was moving forward when you touch down so speeding up a bit at the end should do the trick. In the intermediate time between taking off and landing is the real meat of the game, flying. You have a reticle in the middle of the screen, so aiming and guiding the plane are the same. The environment is flat and featureless, as is the sky. Enemy planes will fly towards you from a distance, and you have to line up shots and take them out. Simple enough. You can roll the plane and do flips if you'd like, and you might want to do that to track the white dots on the radar, which signify the enemy aircraft in the area, or you could choose not to do that and keep flying straight because the enemies will constantly loop back around and attack you head on. So, get fancy if you want, but it's not required. Each level has a different look. So on the first level, it's the boring desert, and in the second level, you fly over some equally boring trees, but the mission never changes. Shoot down all the other planes in the sky. The third level is night flying, so the pallet changes once again, but that's about all. You get the idea. Your jet has a panel with plenty of information on it. The mission you're on, the number of lives, the number of bogeys remaining, and your number of remaining missiles. You only start with three lives and get no continues, and you must destroy all the bogeys in a stage to move on. Missiles, obviously, do a much better job of knocking enemy planes out of the sky, but are limited each stage, unlike your machine gun fire, which is infinite. On the right are other variables, like your altitude, fuel, heading, angle of attack, and the damage sustained. These variables can be helpful, like your damage percentage, but your fuel reduces very slowly, and you'll never know where you are in relative space, so heading doesn't really matter either. Enemies are going to come find you no matter what. In terms of altitude, you just don't want to plummet too close to the ground or you'll crash, but I imagine you knew that. You do have one special trick on your side, though. Stealth. Once during each mission, you can engage your stealth mode by pressing start, which renders you invisible from your enemy's radar in a bit of dogfighting peekaboo which seems awesome, like you can just sneak attack all the other planes, but I was unable to capitalize in this way and didn't find it all that helpful. This is a game that loops on and on and doesn't end. Each mission adds two new bogeys you need to shoot down. Level one starts with four, level two has six, level three has eight, and so on. After the eighth level, the environs loop, but the number of enemies continue to increase. At its heart, Stealth ATF was designed to be a high score game, and with that, Stealth ATF gets repetitive and boring pretty quickly. On top of that, it's tricky to dodge incoming missiles, and trying to chase enemy aircraft to get them in your sights can be tantalizing. Interestingly, a second player can join the game at any time and will assume control of the enemy plane closest to the center of the screen and engage the primary player in a dogfight. And, if you press select, it pauses the game and also toggles between sound effects and music. 
Speaking of the music, the tracks here remind me of Paperboy a little bit. It's not bad, it just sounds more like it belongs in a goofy mascot platformer or something and not in a military stealth fighter game. All said, this stealth fighter flies well under the radar, and understandably so. There are always going to be worse games on the NES, but Gary and the crew's stealth ATF is just a little too bland and repetitive with no rewarding ending to make it interesting enough to put time into. That's going to do it for Stealth ATF on the NES. As always, remember, stealth mode is just sneaky peekaboo, and thanks for watching.